say move your body to the most high. Jesus, oh. Jesus, in this which more pleasure that I praise your name. Jesus, Jesus, in this which more pleasure that I praise your name. You are saying you are praising God with pleasure. They are not forcing you to do it. Like I am not forcing you. You think he deserves it. So move your body like you mean it. Move it like you mean it. He's worthy to be praised. Jesus, 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 he is more pleasure than a praise your name. Jesus, he is more pleasure than a praise your name. Now sing the best of the earth. The best of the earth. Let's sing unto you. Everyone is praising you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 
voice of triumph. Come on, shout hallelujah. Ejoba Oluwa. Ejoba Oluwa. Laye ati loru. Ejoba Oluwa. Ejoba Oluwa. Ejoba Oluwa. Ejoba laye mi Ejoba ni le mi o Laye ati lorun Ejoba oluwa You reign in Maranatha You reign in Nigeria Money you alone are king, oh Lord. I need a job, oh Lua. A job, oh Lua. Laye at the Lord, Baba. A job, oh Lua. Go see you, go see you. Koseni bireo, awi maya. Kosiyo, kosiyo, awi maya. Koseni bireo, awi maya. Kosi, sing with me. Kosiyo, kosi. There is none like you, God. Kosi, Kosi, everybody say Kosi. There is none like you. You looked past my sins, my guilt, and shame, and poured your love. You looked beyond me. You looked beyond me. You. <laughs> You look past my sins, my guilt and shame. You poured your love on me. You look beyond me. You, you look beyond me. You. Jesus, you look past my sins, my guilt and shame. You poured your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. You look past my sins, my errors, my inadequacies. You poured your love. You look beyond me. My faults could not stop you. My arrogance could not stop you. Because your love was stronger. Than anything that could be, you look beyond me. You look beyond me. I've come to confess this morning that I'm the one that you have shown me. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I don't know if it showed you mercy. Oh, I'm the one that 
Can the church pass into deep worship this time? Kaliba Libra Mega Shakeri Bramora Bosch, the Limbro Mogo Satori Banabari, Mamba Catala Framesian Telebo, express yourself, Mepramo Maleg Regashi Halemos, Kapa Talebos, Melibra Mosata, Memba Catale, Kayiga Lambro Moraba. We have come to the living God. We have come to our Father. We have come to the righteous one. Kelim Moria Gala Promoshata. Kelim Ramora Bales worship him. Let's magnify his name. Declare that he alone is God. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Cylinder Sematity with hands lifted up and eyes closed. I want you to envision yourself standing before your king your maker and your God and you're waving to him and you're worshiping him. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12, 22 that we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to Mount Zion, to the new, the heavenly Jerusalem, to the city of the living God. That's where we are. The Bible says we have come before an innumerable company of angels. We have come to the church of the firstborn. Those who, whose names are written up in heaven. That is where we have come. In case you don't know, that is where you are. Lift your hands to him and worship him. Declare, Lord, I've come to you. I have come. I've come to Mount Zion. I have come to the city of the living God. I have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. I have come. I have come to the church of the firstborn. I have come. I have come. My That is where we are. We are standing before our King and our God. Worship Him. Worship Him. In your own way, worship Him. Lift your voice to Him. Let heaven hear you do. Let heaven hear you this morning. Let your name be registered. I am Kata. I have come before my king and my God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Bible says. The four and twenty elders, they bow down, they bow down, they bow down. Whenever the angels sang songs of praise and glory to our King and our God, they bow down and they lift themselves up again. When they lift themselves up again, they see a new dimension of their God and they go down again. When they go down, they return, they look again, they see a new dimension and they go down again. All through their lives, that's what they do. We are believers. We are in the heavenly Jerusalem right now. Who we'll do the same? We bow down and worship. Everybody. 
somebody worship him. Yahweh. Oh God. We bow down and say. We bow and worship this God. And worship. We worship him. Yahweh. Let me just sing to the Lord. Sing, sing. We bow down. We bow and worship and worship. We worship you alone. Yahweh. Oh, we we bow down. We bow down and worship you, Lord. Listen, Yahweh. Oh, 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 oh. Yahweh. We worship you, the Lord. Hey, 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 
worshiping God is when you have a total concentration on him don't allow distractions this time around can you lift up your hands to him in the place of worship there are chains that fall in the place of worship there are battles that are fought on your behalf battles you know nothing about God is fighting it so when you lift your hands to him you are saying Lord I surrender to you handle my battles lift up your hands to him please lift up your hands to him lift up your hands to him lift up your hands to him and see him walking in your life right now in the place of worship great things happen wonderful things take place lift your hands and bless him bless him bless him bless him bless him thank you thank you thank you thank you Lord. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As
Jesus.
said I should tell you just this once I will give it to you don't give up
excited about this because I've experienced it before and I know what it is for God to intervene. I can see this individual. You're hiding. It's kind of like a very dark cave. And yet you were coiled like that and hiding, trying to run away from something that is pursuing you. God says, I should tell you, I will cover your shame. And I will arise for you. Now I saw a guy. As I saw this, I'm like, oh, okay. Right alone in a big, massive runway. Massive runway. Looks like hangar where they put planes. And you just stood there. And you're saying, God, when? God said, I should tell you, it's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. Let's worship God one more time and say, Father, we worship you. Thank you, Lord, for stilling the storm. Thank you for this one more chance. Thank you for covering my shame. Thank you because I am next in line. Lord, I bless you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 have your seats. Bow down your heads. In that sober, sober state of worship, that sober stage of adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Are you worshiping Jesus. the Lord as you are there? Don't look around. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Believe it honestly. The Lord opened my eyes to see the host of heaven with boxes of gifts. Hallelujah. And they were just trooping in into this place. Will you receive yours this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. I receive mine. I receive mine. I receive it, oh God. Thank you. I receive it for myself, for every member of my household. I can come to your presence and go back the same way I came. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth God is a spirit God is a spirit and if you must worship him you need to worship him in spirit and in truth. God says, what I have for you is beyond comprehension. If only you can surrender all. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, is not yet conceived, that that I have in store for you. Only if you can surrender all to me. My spirit leads and my truth sets you free. Then Jesus said, to those Jews which believed on him and Jesus said if you continue in my word then are you my disciples indeed and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. For they that worship me should worship me in spirit and in truth. This is what God is asking of us this morning. That you present 
your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable your reasonable service God we can come before this awesome presence this morning and just leave the way we came this is the moment of rededication that's what God is pouring in my heart say you must worship me in spirit and in truth As you bow your head, talk to your maker. Lord, make me a living sacrifice indeed. Lord, make me a living sacrifice indeed. That I will worship you in spirit. And in truth, in absolute surrender, I come to you this morning. Accept me, accept my worship. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. You know God is talking to you. Shoot your hand up. Let me pray with you where you are. And you're saying, Father, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Lord, I know I am the one you're talking to. In absolute surrender, I return this morning. God bless you, brother. Would you want me to pray with you? Just come. God bless you. One more, two more. Take that bold step this morning and say, Father, absolute surrender. God bless you, my sister. Come. Come. Don't resist the move of that Holy Spirit this morning. Because of you, he set up this moment. Come. Father, behold this your children, because today is a turning point in their lives. They've come in absolute surrender that they will encounter you afresh. Lord, I ask you will breathe on them. The work that you have prepared, what you are set to do in their lives. Let it begin now. Amen. And let their lives never remain the same again. As they take this walk afresh with you, Lord, hold them by their hands. Let their names be written in the book of life. And let their salvation be permanent. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Father, we're grateful because we have not gathered in vain this morning. Thank you for your word of reassurance. Thank you for picking us out with the burdens in our hearts. And thank you for your gifts. Thank you for everyone that believes and have received that that you have given to them. I pray, Lord, that this will not be taken away from us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the renewal of our work with you. Thank you because you seek us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Breathe upon us afresh. In our closet, let us experience you afresh. Thank you, our Father, because this is an evidence that you have received us and you have received our worship this morning. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Celebrate Jesus in the house. Give him praise. Praise the Lord. Offering time. Can we, for those who have, um, at, those who have titles in the house, or those who are remitting um, their pledges or vows, kindly stand, please. Father, we pray for your children who had come in obedience to your word. Father, make their life never been tight in Jesus' name. Everything they lay hands upon, Father, let doors open for them everywhere in Jesus' name. We commit them into your hand. Increase them. Open windows and doors from heaven and pour blessings upon them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Choir, please. Offering time. Please You've done time. so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Everybody say. If I have 10,000 tons, it still won't be enough. Everybody say. on both Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook. And those on MixLR, there's a voice over that has played. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for your children. We thank you that we could come, worship you, and also pay offering in your house. Lord, 
every one of us that has come here today to worship you, either physically or has joined virtually, Lord, let worship and praise of your name never cease in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Daddy, accept this offering. Amen. Let it be used for the furtherance of the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And let all our prayer requests, both open and secret, become testimonies in Jesus' name. Daddy, today is the last Sunday of, the, of this month. And this our month is a month of divine breakthrough. Lord, for as many of us who has not experienced this divine breakthrough, before this month finish, let us experience those breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, let's have our seat. Please be reminded that um, please remember that of our monthly service due of favor that happens um, 5.45 a.m. every Monday. It's a virtual service that is streamed on both Zoom and Mixlr. We also will be having our first congressional vigil, our congressional vigil this month on Friday. Time is 10 p.m. On Saturday will be the first of um, April and we'll be having our command your month. Please also join us as it's going to be an online service. Be reminded of our midweek service Tuesday, Digging Deep, the youth midweek service Wednesday, Expression, and Thursday, we'll be having Faith Clinic. God bless you as you attend all these services. Any other announcement to be taken by the pastor? Let us rise and close the service. Before we go, I would like us to take just one more prayer request of what you want to happen this week. Please ask for something that you know you can't do by yourself. Because you have come here to worship God today, ask him for that thing that is bigger than your power this week. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Is anybody attending the church for the first time this morning? Please signify by raising up your hand. Anyone? Please come, please come, please come. Please come. You are welcome to Maranatha Church. God loves you and rejoices over you. We prepare God's people for Christ's second coming. Welcome to Maranatha Church. Your story will remain the same. Your story will remain. My brother and sisters, you are welcome to Maranatha Church. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Maranatha Church. We are the headquarter parish of Lagos Province 23. We are very big to accommodate you and small also to know you. Please follow my brother Karen. You are welcome to Maranatha and they will introduce you more to the church. Welcome. Thank you. Next is Sunday school, and for those who are attending the first service alone, grace will be taken after Sunday school. And for those who want to wait for the second service, please wait behind as second service will be awesome. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Okay, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all honor. We give you adoration. Father, Lord, we thank you for another time, O oh God, in your presence. Father, as we look into your word, we ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, O oh God, you bless, O oh God, your word in our hearts, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your word profit us, profit us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. So last week we looked at a topic. Okay. Uh, last week we looked at the topic. Who can remind us of our topic for last week? What is our what was our topic for last week? Okay, last week we looked at the topic financial intelligence financial intelligence and one of the things that we said is that to be financially intelligent means to be financially wise taking wise decision when it comes to our financial uh, activities and today we are looking at lesson 30 which is rendering help lesson 30 which is rendering help our memory verse is taken from the book of Acts chapter 9 Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 41. Acts 9, verse 36 to 41. Our Bible passage is Acts 9, 36 to 41. Bible passage, Acts 9, chapter 9, verse 36 to 41. Anybody that is there can help us. Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 41. Acts 9, verse 36 to 41. If you are there, you can help us. Act 9, verse 36 to 41. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. 
This man was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, he brought him to the upper room. And all the windows, all the widows stood by weeping, showing the tunics and garments which Dorcas has made while she was with them. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat his hands and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. Praise the Lord. So when we look at that uh, Bible passage, we see the story of uh, Tabitha. We see that what she had been rendering help to people. And when it happened that uh, she died, it was the widows, the people around, they were showing uh, what she has actually done. And because of the, uh, the help that she has rendered, uh, that actually prompted uh, Peter to quickly attend to her case. And God was not also, also silent concerning her case. God decided to actually answer the cry of the people and she was actually she was actually brought back to life so we can see that what red wind help has great advantage it has a great advantage and my verse is taken from galatians chapter 6 verse 10 galatians chapter 6 verse 10 galatians 6 verse verse 10 and we are going to read it together at the count of three one two three as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let's read together the second time. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. It's actually a memory verse, so I will just be taking the feedback. Okay, we can say without looking at it, Galatians 6, 10. Galatians 6, verse 10. Galatians 6, 10. Without looking at the... the okay, ma'am. Galatians 6, verse 10. Saying, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, Galatians 6, 10. So that, as, as we have a... Uh, opportunity let us uh, do good unto our men especially unto them who have the household of faith galatians 6 verse 10 so rendering help is an act of giving aid or assistance whether material or services to people in need it is an act of giving aid or assistance whether material or services it's not only material and sometimes we can render service to people in form of rendering help to them also, to people in need. It can be in form of corporate social responsibility. It can be in form of corporate social responsibility or personal assistance to the less privileged. We can give personal assistance to the less privileged. More importantly, the Bible encourages us to, uh, to help the members of the household of faith. As we have read in our memory verse, it said, especially to them who are of the household of faith. Our lesson outline is divided into two. The first one is, is who needs our help? Who are the people that needs our help? Who needs our help? Now, there's a question here. Uh, if, you are, if you are able, able to cheer, I said, uh, we, should, uh, I should, we should find out from our students who they helped in the last week. So who are the people that you actually helped in the last week? So who wants to share his own personal experience? Who are the people that you actually helped in the week that passed? Or maybe even today? What uh, form of help have you actually rendered to people in form of rendering help? Who wants to share his own uh, personal experience? Do you have uh, someone that wants to share his or his experience? So who are the people that you have actually, actually helped in the last week? It might even be today. Your, your experience that you want to share? Okay, but you want to say something? Okay, so uh, 
We have actually helped people. Maybe we don't want to share it, but at least we have actually helped one way or the other. You have, uh, you have helped someone with one person or the other uh, another person. Now, the, the teacher should we have to mention and explain the people that actually need our help. Who are the people that need our help? Now, one of the people that need our help is actually our family members. Our family members. Our family members, those are the first people that act well. They need what? Our help. They need our help. Both the immediate and our extended family. Both the immediate and our extended family. But it will surprise us that what? Sometimes, some people, they actually what? They neglect their family. Some persons, they don't even what? Show help to their, to their family. Especially, maybe some persons, maybe they are, they are going, they forget their parents. They forget their parents, you know, in this like the hustle and the bustling of uh, Lagos sometimes make them to actually forget their parents. But we, sh we should not actually what? Let uh, uh, the, 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 the problem of this life to actually what? Let us to forget even our family members, our brothers, our sisters that actually need what? Our help. So those are the people that actually need our help. Committed brethren who are in need. Committed brethren. Our brothers and sisters of the household of faith, those ones that are in need, those ones that are in need. Sometimes people will not tell you that what well, they actually need a uh, thing or a particular person, but sometimes it might take our, our observation. We might actually look at them and say, okay, observe that what? This, this person actually need what? needs this thing. Galatians 6 verse 10, it said what? Especially them of the household of faith. Who are the people that need our help? The age and the old people. The age and the old people. People that are age and they are, they are old. They actually need what? Our help. Not only maybe you want to cross the road and you are actually when you are there, you can actually what, assist them in crossing the road. Or maybe they are carrying a, a load and you are there, you can actually what, assist them to, what, to carry those uh, load. And financially also, materially also, they might do they will need our help. Those are the things in the areas that we can actually what? Help them. Who are the people that need our help? We have the widows and the widowers. The widows and the widowers. They, they, what? they need our help. Both materially, financially also. They need our what? Our help in those areas. They also need our services also. The orphans, the deserted helpless. The orphans, the orphans need our help. The deserted helpless, they also need our help. The poor, the poor among us also need our help. The physically challenged, especially challenged people, both emotionally and uh, mentally challenged people, they need our help. People are what? No, we are talking about depression these days. Sometimes, uh, some people, they, they might well, show you emotional, they might be emotionally down, but we might just give them a word of encouragement to actually encourage them at that time, and that might go a long way to actually what? Bring help to them. Body of believers also. The body of believers, we need our help. The church of God needs our support. They need our help in what? In areas of their project and their about. So those are the people that actually need our help. Our community members. Our community members, the society at large. We have talked about the corporate social responsibility. So we can what? We can uh, come, team up our efforts together and what? Perform one social responsibility or the other that can actually help our community, that can help the society at, at large. So we can actually show, uh, show, show help in this uh, area. Now, in order to help uh, people around us, we should actually, we can actually link to these people directly or indirectly. How can we actually show help? Not in the area of material also, but sometimes we can actually give them what? Links also that can actually help, help them. You know, sometimes, you know, there's, there's a saying that's what? Uh, don't uh, uh, give me fish. Show me how to what? How to what? Get uh, the fish. Sometimes it might just be that well. you have a link to a job. And you have a brother in the church that is actually looking for, for a job. Or the brother is asking for, uh, for financial assistance every time. You can just look at, oh, I have, I have this job. Can you do this job? 
and it's in that area you've actually helped that brother financially that is actually a long way of helping that brother so that the brother will not come every time and say ah, please sir i need the ten thousand i need two thousand i need three thousand but if the, that brother is working then that brother can actually cater for himself and actually help others also now when we help should not be an excuse for some people to be lazy or indulge in or feel entitled. Let's, uh, getting help should not be an opportunity whereby people now become say, lazy. You know, some person, they, because of uh, every time they watch, they are always asking, they say, okay, every time I meet this person, they will, they will give me. As a result of that, they become uh, lazy. They become entitled. They believe that's what, you know, there are some persons that what, if they meet if they you for help, I say, I don't have. I don't have at this time. They become angry. They say, How will he say he does? He, 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 he do not have uh, this. Uh, look at the way he's dressed. Look at uh, the car he's driving. But at that point of time, I don't have. But at that instant, that person becomes what? Entitled. He believes that's what? Anytime I ask you, you should actually give me at that instance. So, uh, what, okay, I, I just want to ask for your opinion. What's our, what's our, our reactions as, as regards that? For people that are actually entitled, they feel entitled to you. What what our own uh, reaction to that? What can we say as regards that? As a sister, do you have something? I think you have something to say. You have something to say, but praise the Lord. You know there are some people that are entitled. They believe that that thing you have, you must is a must. You must give them. So if you don't give them, you are in trouble with them. That thing is not their own, no. Maybe that thing might not even be enough for you or you have something else you want to use that thing for. But because they are entitled, they believe that this war, you must give me. If you don't give me, you are in trouble. So those ones that are entitled, I don't know. We pray that God will help each and every one of us in Jesus' name. And also give us the grace to be given, to be in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, ma. So, uh, it should not be an opportunity for people to actually be entitled. So, believers should note that all our possessions come from God. All our possessions come from God. So, as it comes from God, then God actually owns everything. And we are actually custodians of God's uh, our possession. God has actually made us custodians. So, we must ensure that what we actually give this as wherever necessary. Now, also, we should be encouraged to give people in need and rather helpful services because they result in blessing. We should be encouraged to actually give people in need because this actually what leads to blessing. Uh, let's look at Proverbs 22, verse 9. 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 Are you there, man? Proverbs 22, verse 9. He who has generous eye will be blessed, for he gives his bread to the poor. So who have, have generous eye will be blessed, because he gives his what? His best to the poor. So, it, so that person is actually blessed. His blessing attached to it. Rendering help and expecting nothing back from the recipient is a great way to be Christ-like. So, rendering help and expecting nothing back from the recipient is a great way to be Christ-like. So, rendering help and expecting nothing back from the recipient is actually a great way to be like our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we are giving, not because we are actually expecting something from the next person, but because what? We are giving to what? Unto God. And God will definitely bless us in Jesus' name. Now, how should we help? How should we help? Uh, help. How should we help? How should we render help to, pe uh, to people around us? Now, what to note about helping is that our help should actually be done in love. Our help should be done in love. You know, when we look at the book of uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, he said, sometimes we can actually give, and that giving might not be done in love. So, we should what? We should give, give in love. We should render help in in love we should rather help our services unto god and not unto man it should be done as services 
unto God and not unto man. So giving, for instance, should not be an actual sign of our love, should be an actual sign of our love for others. So giving should be an actual sign of our love for others. An actual sign is actually what an actual thing. So it should be an actual sign of our love for others. We should give expecting God to bless us in return. When we give, we should also as well expect God to actually what? Bless us in return. The Bible says that expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. So now, uh, Luke 6, 38, he said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake, shake it together, shall men pour to our bosom. So we should give to show the depth of our faith. So giving is shows the depth of our faith. It shows the depth of our faith. It shows how deep we are actually what? We have actually studied the, 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 the word. We have actually known God. It shows the depth of our faith. So the state of the heart of the giver matters more than the size of the gift. So the state of the heart of the giver, it matters more than the size of the gift. So the state of the heart matters a lot. Not necessarily the, uh, the size. You know, some people, uh, they might give a big thing, but they give this word, godly. They just give it, they say, just take, just take, and stop disturbing me. But there are some people that what, they will give you just little thing. And they are giving it what? With their own heart. They are giving it, and that's why Jesus Christ gave the issue of that widow. That gives what? That just, that's, that, uh, that, that, that's small shilling. And he said what? She has given what? Her best. Because she gave it what? With the whole of her heart. Possibly, when she was giving it, she was dancing. She was just rejoicing. She was, and she was just giving it with, with all at best. So the state of the art matters, not the size of what of the of the gift. Now, Paul actually encouraged the believer to to give generously and willingly. The Bible says, Second Corinthians eight twelve. He said, God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. So we should give cheerfully with strong conviction. We should give cheerfully with strong conviction. Now, we are saying that what? Nobody should actually give under duress. Nobody should give under duress. But giving, even when you are long term, can be a learning process. No, but we are saying that nobody should give under duress. But sometimes, when you are, even sometimes, you know that there are sometimes, as you are going in faith, you know sometimes you might be reluctant. You might be reluctant to give. But that can also be what? A learning process for you as a, as a Christian. As a Christian, that might be a learning process for you when you are reluctant at first. But later, it now comes to you and that's okay. Let me just go ahead and, and give this uh, amount. And when you just give that amount, God actually what? Bless you at that uh, instance. Okay, sir. Not giving under duress is different from giving sacrificially. Giving sacrificially is that when you are determined to do something for God. You understand? Look at David. David said, I will not give something that will not cost me. It will not cost me anything. So when you give sacrificially, it's because you tag that giving for one purpose. You understand? And it's not convenient. It pains you to drop it, but it is a covenant giving, which has greater reward than ordinary offering and any other thing. Even it has greater reward more than tight. Because God sees your heart, He knows that it's not convenient for you. And when you are giving that kind of thing, you don't give it when you are laughing. You don't give it dancing. You give it pain in pains. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, bro. I want to contribute. There are some people that give to show off. They give to show off. Let me give so that people will know that I have given. They call out people that want to give one million naira in the church. You see them coming out so that people will know that I have money. There is no reward though. There is no reward. So if you want to give, give secretly. God that sees in secret will reward you openly. Okay, ba. Uh, so, a giving, we must give 
are sacrificially a God bless a cheerful giver. So apart from okay, but praise the Lord. Those people are not calling their own. It is our pastors that are calling them. So, uh, you know, when I when we started, we said what nobody should actually give under duress. Praise the Lord. When the church need is in need, and your spiritual father call that those who have to come out. If you sit down, you don't come out, and you know that you have, you want to give, you understand? By the time you even go back to give, you may not even get the reward. Because at that particular moment, there are some angels around. Even God himself wants to see if you will obey. And if you obey, if you have, if you obey, there is a reward for it. But if not for that you purposely want people to see, God sees your heart. What are you doing it for? Are you doing it for the progress of the church or you want to, people to know that you have? But if there is a calling for it, whether people say you are showing up or not, because your spiritual father called for it, you must obey because you have. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So it is important. We must not because uh, uh, when, when giving can actually come in different, uh, but like, like, the story, like the story of our father in the Lord, when he said, when the, the, the founder said they should go and empty their accounts, they should go and empty their accounts, you know, and when they come on Sunday, they should bring it. So he decided what? He said that his wife, they what? They, they empty their account, and they both, when the, when the, 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 the was called, he said that, okay, oh, oh yeah, who has, the, who has decided to, and nobody, nobody came, it's only just, just two of them. So they were just, they were doing this not to show off, but they, they had what they had the intention of was of giving to God. That is the art. Is the art. So there are so many persons that what that want to give to God. When the Bible goes, okay, give to give. And they have the, the art is to what to give their best, not to actually what show off at that uh, instance. And there are somebody that want to show off, but God sees the art and He actually rewards. So we cannot make that conclusion. Even there is a book I read, Pastor Oyedepo. He was in a program, you understand, and. The church need particular, even they need chair for crusade. And he doesn't have anything in his pocket. What, what does he have? He has the gold wristwatch. And he has the gold wristwatch and drop it in the offering bag. That is the intention. Spirit of giving. He doesn't have cash. He doesn't have money anywhere. But he has a gold wristwatch. And he removed the gold wristwatch and drop it in the offering. And God sees all this kind of thing. May God help us with Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, our giving must be done cheerfully. It must be done willingly. And it must be done. So, as also, as we are giving, we must be expectant from God. We are not saying, say what? It's not only material things that you can actually give. You can give what? Your services. In the, what? In the body of Christ, like you and I as workers, also, we can also what? Give our services in the world, in the body of Christ also. Now, quickly, what are that is, what, what can we do or give to help people in need? What can we give to help people in need? What are that is that we give to help people in need? Praise the Lord. I want to to what he says, giving your service in the house of God. You know, so many people, they have been in the house of God warming the bench for God. God doesn't want bench warmers again in his church. He wants those who are very active. Get yourself involved in one thing or the other. Join the workforce. Get yourself involved. You have been in the church for the past six months, one year. You are not doing anything. Then every Sunday you come, you warm the church for God. God wants you to start producing fruit. Get involved in things in the church of God. Work for God so that God can also work for you. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Another act of giving that I want us to look at is that you know a particular person. He may be in the church. He may be in your neighborhood. And you know that that person needs prayer. 
when you pray for this kind of people, you understand, the hour you use, maybe in the night, to pray for that, you know that person cannot reward you. And the person doesn't even know that you are praying for him or her. You understand? These are the kind of prayer that God has. And it's an it's a act of giving. It is not that you call the person to give the person money or to give him connection to me something. But you are praying for him because you want the betterment of that person. You understand? God answers this kind of prayer faster than giving money. So thank you very much, sir. Okay, but Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we join units, you notice that maybe there is a member in that unit. Maybe the, it's an ushery unit, protocol. And they have to wear a certain clothes. And you as the leader, for example, you know that the person is not dressing up to standard. Instead of embarrassing the person, why not call the person privately if you have more? Why not give that person and, you know, like within the church, within ourselves, and help that person to look that part? I feel that's also a major way we can give to one another in the church. So that's uh, one way we can actually give to others. So any question, any any question, any other contribution, any other question, or do you have a question? Do you have a question? Okay, uh, do I have a question? I have a question. Is it is it every giving? Is it every giving that will that will definitely produce a blessing? You know, there are some. Is there any giving? Let me just put it that way. Is it every giving that will produce a, a blessing? Praise the Lord. I believe that every giving will produce a blessing depending on the motive of that giving. If the motive is to help the person, not to show up, I'm still saying about this issue of show up, not to show up, it will produce a blessing. Praise the Lord. It will produce, let's take for example, that did you have said some time ago, early stage of his Christianity, he said he used to give out, give out ties to his pastor. And what comes back to him used to be what? Ties. So whatever you give out will come back to you. But please, every blessing that you give, as long as the motive is right, will surely come back to you. God doesn't owe anybody. Okay, thank you very much, Ba. Thank you, thank you very much, Ba. Although there's a reason why I'm actually... Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think most giving problem is a, is a originally an identity problem. If you know who you are, you will have no problem giving. There is a, somebody that told me that, and I believe this strongly, that you give because you are blessed, not necessarily because you want to get blessed. But it's a cycle. Once, once you are blessed before you give, and then you continue to be blessed because we are blessed because God has blessed us with Jesus Christ. So when you understand that properly, you know who you are, you know you have something to give, you will give. Thank you very much, sir. So thank you very much for your contribution. So one of the reasons why I asked that question is, is it every giving that will actually produce a blessing? Is because I, I, one of the, I, how I ask this is this. For instance, if you give to maybe a shrine house, you give to a... Uh, would that one actually produce a, a blessing? Is that? Okay, it, it will. Uh, is that? It will, it will produce. It will produce devil's blessing. Okay. It will produce devil's blessing. You know, uh, they are giving also as, you know, like a soil. It's just like you are planting, you are planting also. It will definitely bring what? A return. It depends on the kind of soil, the soil that you actually want, plant to. That will bring what? A return also. So you must also want to look out for the kind of soil that you actually sow into. That's what I want to say. And in summary, let me quickly say, believers are money to render help to the needy. And this must be in line with scriptural guidelines so as to be blessed. Conclusion. God loves it when we give and he will always pay back in ways we least imagine. Let's pray together. Let's say, Father, please help me to give to the needy according to your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please help me to give to the needy According to your will, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
woman beside her was saying, ah, why? In the church, they didn't give me, why? Blah, blah, blah. So I was sitting at the back, I sat down there. So the woman was now crying that, ah, in the church, they are behaving like this. Ah, the woman was crying, so I was now crying with her. Ah, don't cry now, maybe they need to have enough uh, invitation to him. And I said, no. It's because that woman is rich. That's why they selected her. And I said, ah, no. Don't judge like that. But my, that thing was even bothering me since that day. That, ah, is it true? I wanted to know. Maybe they are selecting or, you know, if this is a church. You don't have to select anybody. You understand? So I don't know. I'm just asking a question. Praise the Lord. I don't even know the question to answer. Let's just bow her to pray. My time is up. I will encourage you next week. We'll answer your questions. The time is already up. The choirs are here. Amen. Shall we bow our heart to pray? Father, we thank you for this um, offering. We also commit even to this Sunday school into your hands. We ask Holy Spirit of God that you instruct us and help us to understand what it means to give. Help us also to have understanding of what happens in the church. As touching the question our star asks, we pray whatever that woman needs, you minister to her. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that at the end, our life will be blessed. Help us to continue to render help and help us to do it with wisdom. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. For those who are attending first service, can you rise on your feet? Let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the coming of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Sorry we could not attend to your question. But we'll be. do that next week.